What's up, guys? Hope you had a kick-ass weekend. Let's talk about last week and how I did selling calls on VTI and also threw some Tesla in there and also the outlook for this week. I will also let you know some other videos I am going to release this week, well, record and release this week. In case you have any questions you want to leave down in the comments so that I can answer them inside that video, let's dive right down into the computer and talk about last week and then this week. All right, so here's my personal options tracker template or whatever. All the Discord members get a copy of this. You can check it out. I've been tracking way back to 2020 for all, any of you that are new. So far this week, we closed up a VTI call and then we traded Tesla. Now, if you watch my video from Friday or maybe Thursday, I talked about that I was thinking about taking assignment on Tesla. You guys know that I'm super bearish on Tesla, so didn't really want to take the assignment up that high. It spiked for a second. I was able to close for a profit, so I grabbed $35 after it pretty much dipped back and corrected. So far in November, we're looking at $248. It brings us to seven grand pretty much for the year, and considering Q1 was a pretty big loss, I will take that so far, about $630 a month. At the beginning of the year, this portfolio is at like $35,000 or $40,000, so I'll take $7,000 on a $45,000 portfolio. But let's go right into VTI because that's really where I'm going to be focusing. How much money can I make just selling calls on ETFs that are very pretty much safe or good for retirement like the S&P 500? VTI just happens to be the total stock market index fund. So if we come over that, like I said, just started doing that in the beginning of November. Now you'll see there's a couple more trades here than on the previous spreadsheet. That's because I am trading this with 400 total shares. So I have 200 in my Robinhood portfolio, and then I have 200 over in Vanguard, which I just transferred over to Fidelity. I am leaving Vanguard. I'm changing brokerages over to Fidelity, so I'm gonna make a video about that. So if you have any questions about like the differences or why exactly I'm getting out of Vanguard and going over to Fidelity, leave those down in the comments. Considering that I might want to close or ladder them, in the other spreadsheet here, I just posted it as one trade. Like I said, you see the open for $180 here and the open down here for $264, where that is just the sum of these two right here, the 132, 132, and the 80. That's, that's kind of where I'm getting that. And I wanted to, on this single spreadsheet with just VTI, I wanted to separate them into each individual trades in case I wanted to close one or roll one, let one ride, or you know, ladder them as I increase more shares. And we had a PR week last week. The first week I did this, I got $163. Last week, $280. And right now, that's at a collateral uh, inside the Fidelity account, the Fidelity account now. Uh, my basis on those 100 shares is $20,000. Eight, uh, 874 and in Robinhood, $9,000 more because I just added those to the portfolio. So you can see just this month alone, I am at a 443. And I think the reason why it's different, I, I must have missed a trade on my other spreadsheet. Yeah, I missed a trade on my other spreadsheet. I will update that. I'm a donkey. I apologize. $443 for an average of $73.83. That's the other reason why I want to separate all of these trades out into their own individual trades in case you don't have 400 shares. Maybe you have 100. You're like, Brad, what can I expect on just 100 shares? Well, right now, at an average opening delta of 0.41, you can expect about a uh, $73.83 for that. And that return right now is giving me 0.32%, uh, right? I will definitely take that ROI right now on my average collateral and my net premium, 0.32% for doing this for just about a week. Now, of course, I wanna keep PRing every single week. With that transfer over Fidelity, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get in covered calls on that portfolio, but we'll definitely be doing the Robinhood. We are gonna be looking at a green day. Speaking of the Discord, here's kind of like what you'd expect on a normal basis. I'm gonna break down what I'm looking at for tomorrow as far as even my day trades and the charts and just my expectations going into the week. We'll talk through those right now. You can kind of see how I'm communicating with the Discord if that's something that you might wanna do. And then we will close up shop and we'll get ready for Monday morning's open. And just in case I forget to say it while I'm here ranting, another video I'm gonna post this week is why I think that credit spreads are trash. I think they're trash. So I'm gonna make a video about it. If you have any questions on credit spreads and why I think they're trash, leave them down in the comments below. YouTubers love, oh gosh, they, 
grow your small account. We'll talk about it in that video. So let's go over to the charts and look at a couple things that we're going to be doing and some changes that I'm going to make. For those of you that are new, I trade commodities on a trend line basis. Okay. And I have a full strat breakdown video. You can check out that video. But right now we have some pretty weak trend lines. If we do say so on platinum, which really is my favorite, we have this downtrend. We also have this area of support that's acted as support into this really, really strong trend line. For those of you that are new, my dotted trend lines just mean they don't have enough real strong data yet to really give me the entry that I want. Uh, usually that's gonna come in three touch points and maybe like a two weeks worth of data. So that means this one's a good one. So I'm waiting for this support to really hold this up and then we'll look for a break. As a swing trader, guys, this is on the daily chart. If I go down to the four hour chart, we can see it really hugging and trying to create a new trend line. I also use some fair value gaps and all the things that you're gonna see in trading, but I am a swing trader. I'm not a day trader. I don't take many trades, but when I do, they're usually pretty good unless things go against me as things do from time to time. But that's really what I'm looking at for platinum. The other thing that I like to trade is crude oil on the same type of strategy. Crude oil has been kind of dumping since it hit this area, which was a fair value gap. It did not close that fair value gap, so it's still open. And that's just riding itself down. There is a roll, guys. So if you are trading crude oil, make sure you roll your contract forward. Uh, over here, it says that it's going to recommend going out to January 2025. And then we have another support down here, another trend line here that it might want to operate and maybe turn this one from a dot to get me one more touch and see if we can break this downtrend. But those are the things that I'm looking at as far as swing trading and maybe taking some scalp day trades with those two commodities that I trade. I do not trade the NASDAQ and I do not trade the ES like most people do. To be honest, as a swing trader, there's just too much movement. I like to kind of just set my trade, keep things really simple. It really is a hobby for me and that's why I'm doing that. The last chart I will bring up is gonna be the daily chart on the SPX, okay? And the reason that we have this open is because I am gonna be selling puts on the SPX index inside that Fidelity account as well. Whenever that transfers has happened, I'm gonna make a video of why I love SPX and why I'm gonna be using naked puts to write those uh, puts on SPX on really a daily basis. So look forward to that video as well. But on here, I pretty much on the daily have just an area that was once uh, resistance, resistance now acting as support, now acting as support. So tomorrow going into market open, unless there's a huge gap down, I'm gonna be looking for a 5,700 strike on that put. I will use a stop loss. I also will use Delta occasionally, but for things like the SBX trading on the daily time frame and doing zero days to expiration, I am also gonna use technical analysis for those trades as well. And that's what I, I think you should really find things that you really understand, right? I understand the S&P 500, that's why I can do SPX. And I like, and I've learned through platinum and crude, I just like those particular assets to trade. I'll leave you with this guys, as the market starts to run and crypto's going crazy, there's so many people out there that are, you know, build a small account or start trading options. They're, they're gonna come out of the woodworks, guys. And to even say like, I wasn't that guy once upon a time, I was, all right? There was once upon a time where I thought that views and subscriber counts and all those things mattered. I've been doing this now for eight, nine years. And I can tell you this, I am past those phases and I'm more worried about the subscribers I have as opposed to subscribers that I might have in the future. Just be really cautious in this market right now, guys. You know, if, if, we're talking about Bitcoin now, it's probably too late, all right? And if we're talking about other cryptos, it's probably too late. When you start hearing about things, it's probably too late. Guys, get rich quick is never, never gonna be a great thing or this is not the channel for you guys. I'm going to help you learn things that you can scale over time and really see a hockey stick. I, I just wanna put that out there because I'm getting messages from friends and that's how I know the market's raging when people I know that don't even invest start, start reaching out to me, but please, if you have any questions, like I said, on why I'm leaving Vanguard, why I think, for the reasons I just explained, why I think credit spreads are really trash as opposed to cash gear puts, covered calls, and even in some cases, naked puts if you have the skill set to do so. But here I am showing you guys, I'm just going to do VTI, right? I'm going to do VTI and I'll dabble with Tesla here and there just so I can show you, even in a week like last week, I did better with a nice consistent mover like VTI than I did with the volatile Tesla. All right. Hope that helps. And I will catch you probably tomorrow, Monday or Tuesday, depending on what happens and how much things trade. 
I'll check you on the next one.